So it's midnight, Friday night. We're the only ones left here in the building. Everyone else is pretty much gone. I've been here since 9 o'clock this morning. We've been working these kind of hours since April, and we have at least another six or seven weeks to go of it. Um, it's crazy. I mean, we have a lot of crazy stuff to do, but I think, you know, we'll be able to pull it all together and get the game out the door in the end. After having worked on Age of Empires and the Age of Kings, that completed a six-year period where we had worked on historical games, and uh, we thought we'd give the historical games a rest and come out with something really new for our fans. In October of 2002, Dallas-based Ensemble Studios released Age of Mythology, the highly anticipated follow-up to the best-selling Age of Empires series of real-time strategy games. For the Ensemble Studios team, Creating Age of Mythology was more challenging than anything they'd ever faced before. Uh, Age of Mythology is the biggest project we've ever taken on. We've never taken on a project of such epic proportions before. And because of that, you know, we needed a bigger team than we've ever had before. And also, this project took three years, which is longer than we've ever worked on a project before. So this really stretched us creatively and technically. Age of Mythology has definitely been a labor of love. Working on a game like this really takes a lot of dedication and a lot of effort. People here pour pretty much their whole lives into the project. And while it's a lot of work, it's also very rewarding. The thing that's unique about Age of Mythology for us is that usually when you're doing a game, you pick one or two things that are going to be your back-of-the-box feature items. And uh, on Age of Mythology, it ended up that just every single part of the game that we wanted to do was a back-of-the-box feature item. We have a whole new multiplayer, a whole new engine, the look of the game, the gameplay that we wanted to get in, god powers, just everything turned out to be a huge raising the bar, trying to knock one out of the park effort for us. In Age of Empires, we stuck to the constraints of history, which was really fun. But in Age of Mythology, we get to cover uh, really cool characters such as medusas that can turn things to stone or centaurs or minotaurs. We can also have uh, god powers such as you know lightning storms and uh, earthquakes so we get to have really cool stuff in Age of Mythology. This is a behind-the-scenes look at the making of Age of Mythology. I cross over the uh over the ice bridges that break when no. the mountain giants walk on. Bridges. Or fire giants. Yeah. Melt we, the, it would melt. Melts. We won't need birds we have bridges. When we finished Age of Empires 2, Age of Kings, we knew we didn't want to just do Age of Empires 3 and 3D. Our fans wanted something new, plus our guys internally here wanted to try something new and fresh as well. Having sold over 10 million copies of their games worldwide, including Age of Empires and Age of Kings, the pressure was on Ensemble Studios to create the next generation of real-time strategy games. After discussing and subsequently discarding scores of ideas for game themes, including everything from aliens to sorcerers, the team at Ensemble Studios settled on a mythology concept that seemed to lend itself to their previous games. The thing that was really attractive about mythology for us was it gave us a loose historical framework to, to build the game around. We're used to working with the historical framework, but it also gave us the freedom um, to put in a lot of things we wouldn't be able to do, um, say if we were doing Age of Kings Part Two or another age of game straight out. Um, with mythology we have the ability to go in and we added god powers and mythological units and we were just capable of doing a lot of things that we couldn't do in, in a pure historical framework. When we start a new game we do a lot of research um, in books and on the internet to try to figure out ideas for the game but ultimately the history is only a theme and if there's ever a battle between fun and realism fun always has to win. The challenge you run into when you're going to do mythological research is that everybody has their own interpretations of the myths and uh, a lot of them conflict. Every mythology we looked at had a god that was the ultimate god. Our challenge was figuring out how we were going to get all those to mesh in our game uh, and make sense. Designers had a formidable task before them. Make the game enjoyable and non-intimidating for casual players, yet make it challenging enough for the most hardcore gamers. We want Age of Mythology to be accessible to everyone, whether they're a gamer or not a gamer, no matter how much experience they have. So we take the game and we put it in front of people of all different levels and make sure that they're able to play. We look for problems that we have and then we design solutions and try out the testing again. We keep doing that, iterating, testing, redesigning, recoding until we have something we think that is accessible to everyone. Well, Age of Mythology is a different kind of game for us in that it's not purely historical. And when we started out, we had people within the company who were worried that, first of all, we might alienate some of our hardcore fans 
by going away from history, but on the other hand, by trying to put all this historical content into a, a game that has battle bores and meteors, uh, we might make it too dry as well. So we thought real hard on how to bring the best elements of both together, and I think in the end we really overcame it. To us, mythology is, is almost historical. This is just a historical game from the point of view of the people that lived in this time period. Uh, I mean, like the ancient Greeks really thought this was how the world worked. The ancient Egyptians really thought this was how the world worked. That's what we wanted to capture with Age of Mythology. Unlike many game developers who begin with a detailed plan that they closely follow through to completion, this team of gamers turned game makers believes in a design by playing approach. The basic design philosophy here is to design our games by playing them. We rely on our instincts as gamers to tell us when it's really fun. That takes advantage of all our passion to make and play great games. So once we get to the point where it's playable, we test and adjust, make changes and retest, and over time the game turns into something really is fun to play. One of the really interesting things we tried to do in Age of Mythology this time was put a lot more time and resources into the single player campaign. One of the ways we did that was through our in-game cinematics as well as gameplay. Our in-game cinematics are so cool, you can get down close to the heroes and the characters in the game and watch them in between the actual scenarios, and then the camera seamlessly comes back out to the gameplay view and the players are actually playing with the characters that they just watched in the cinematic. Creating a diverse cast of characters, from mythical beasts and powerful gods to armies of archers and infantry, everyone from scratch was the job of Ensemble Studios Art Department, a team of skilled artists, modelers, and animators. One of our objectives in uh, the art department was really to create the world of Age Mythology and to create a world that was interesting to the, to the player, uh, from the terrains to the units to the buildings. Everything that we, we created, we tried to make something that we enjoyed and something that we thought the users would feel very much a part of as, as they're playing the game. Concept art is really instrumental in developing the look and feel of our game. We have a really talented concept art team who takes a lot of ideas from the designers, concepts them out, passes those on to our modeling and texture mapping team who then develop it in 3D and get it ready for uh, use in the game. Once we have a model into the computer, it's handed off to a texture artist and depending on if it's a unit or a building, the texture artist then draws that texture and applies it to the model. Uh, we'll actually do this several times, looking at the concept sketch, the computer and what we have in game, and we'll repeat this process several times in, in order to get what we like. Once the texture is added, the character is turned over to an animator. The animator creates cycles of animation, walk, idle, and attack for example, before the character is finally inserted into the game for testing and play. Moving from 2D to 3D was a big challenge for the artist. They had to um, change the way they thought about creating units and, and using the uh, resources we had available. Instead of having unlimited number of polys, they had to control the number of polys they used on units to but still make it a, a really good looking game. I think in the end, we really achieved a better looking game than we did with a 2D engine using the 3D engine. Artist David Cherry was responsible for gathering information and translating those ideas into the Age of Mythology box. I'm a traditional artist. Um, I like to paint with acrylics on board, if possible, with paint and brush. But when you're working on a box cover for a game, you've got so many changes, so many deadlines, one on top of another, that it's much more functional to scan the work in and work in Photoshop. Uh, to make the changes and make the files that everybody has to see. Unfortunately, industry standards for packaging size and shape can and do change, and such changes can result in setbacks in production for game companies, especially when it happens late in the process. Changing the box size really threw the marketing art department for a loop. Uh, we had everything set up to be a certain size. We thought we knew what the box was going to be, and all of the composition was set for that. Then, all of a sudden, everything had to be smaller, so things didn't fit. It was stressful for a while, but we made our way through it. The musical score and sound effects in Age of Mythology 
are the original creations of Ensemble Studios' sound and music department. In the past, we've relied heavily on synthesizers and keyboards, but for this game, we really wanted to have an organic feel, and uh, the way we tried to achieve that was bringing in more live instruments into the music and getting a real natural feel to it. For portions of the musical score, Stephen Rippey and Kevin McMullen were required to stretch their musical wings and compose for a full 70-piece orchestra and choir. Working with a live orchestra was something that we'd wanted for a long time but never really had the opportunity to do. And when it came up for Age of Mythology, we were really excited about it, but we were also pretty nervous. We weren't sure if we'd be able to pull it off. The orchestra was truly amazing. Working with them was a completely new experience for us. We really had to just go full throttle and see what happened. And with the people we were working with, everything turned out better than we could have imagined. When it came to sound effects design, the sound team made the decision to create the majority of the sound effects from scratch rather than using their existing libraries. We feel like it's important to build up a large bank of sounds that we can use in the game. And to do that, we have to pull sounds from everywhere. Um, whether that means getting people out of their offices to go stomp around in the parking lot, or going to the grocery store and finding vegetables to smash, or taking our sound equipment down to the zoo to record the animals there. And sometimes the stuff that we get winds up being used in the weirdest places. Uh, for example, a room full of penguins turned into the sound of souls being tortured in the underworld. Once we have a sound, uh, we go to put it in the game. For example, uh, on an animation of a unit, we'll open up the animation and plug in the sounds to match its movements. It never ceases to amaze me the life that comes to that unit when you add the sound. And then when you have several units on screen in the game, it really becomes a living world. A programmer is a person who makes the game effectively come together and work behind the scenes. Uh, artists make the game look good, designers make the game fun, but a programmer is the person who writes all the code to actually make it all come together and work in the end. The programmers of Age of Mythology wrote over a million lines of code, translating into roughly 60 man years of time put into the project. The computing power required to create Age of Mythology was roughly 100 times greater than that required to send man to the moon. In a lot of ways, uh, code is a foundation of the game. Uh, it defines what the artists and uh, designers can do. Uh, we try to make it as flexible as possible so they can do the things that they want to do to express you know, their vision of the game. But uh, there are always technical limitations that we have to live within, so we have to walk the fine line between uh, what's possible and what we'd like to do. Some of the hardest challenges that the programmers have faced on Age of Mythology have been getting the various subsystems into the game, like AI and God Powers. It's one thing to get them into the game, but the hardest part is making them fun to play. The code becomes fun when you can get instant gratification out of it. Um, here at Ensemble, we have an iterative development process. So when you make changes in the God Power system, for example, we can make those changes quickly and we can put them in front of players almost immediately. With those changes in that quick, we allow the players to give us very fast feedback on what makes the game fun and also give us balance input. Remarkably, even after years of development, the Ensemble Studios programmers still look forward to playing. Age of Mythology has been under development for about three years. It's been playable for the majority of that time. And we always said we'd never release a game unless it was absolutely fun. And I guess one of the ways I can tell that is even after we've worked long crunch hours and we're here late at night, we end the day with a game out in the playtest area and it's a lot of fun. When we sat down to do Age of Mythology, we really wanted to be ambitious. We set out to do a 3D engine at a time when, honestly, we weren't even really sure we could do it. Uh, the nice thing is that after a lot of years of hard work, uh, we've got something that we're really happy with. If you want to I suggest the west rope. Hey, 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 it's okay. It's okay. That's going to make the stat awesome. Aren't a nightmare? I mean, maybe they are a nightmare. What is the one, you know? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have the, like, the organizational. There's a huge interest on the fan sites right now about Asian mythology, uh, way before the games be released. Uh, we encourage that by keeping in touch with those people, providing them with screenshots, AVIs, inside tales about the development process. We want to build this information flow and keep it steady and then carry it through after the launch. Perhaps the most important function of Ensemble Studios' marketing team has to do with nurturing the fan base. We have a very large and interested community of fans worldwide, and they uh, come to our webpage and 
find out information about the, the game as it's being developed and we try to use that as a conduit to communicate to them and gather feedback and basically help build interest and excitement as the game moves to completion. Somewhat surprisingly, the largest fan base appears to be from overseas. The top fan sites in the world for our games are actually in France and Germany. And actually our games sell better in Europe than they do in North America. But we believe it's partly because we draw from their cultural histories to make our games the background information. And also I just think that the people in those areas of the world really like strategy games. What we're shooting for is the ability to have users from any, any country or any language be able to type and communicate in their own natural language at the same time. So you could be in a, in a multiplayer chat room with uh, English speakers and Chinese and Japanese speakers in the same room and you'll see everybody's language uh, as they see it. I believe it'll be rewarding in creating a sense of uh, a global community. In an industry that generates more revenue than even motion pictures, some $31 billion projected for 2002, Ensemble Studios takes this business of fun very seriously. <laughs> but I am uh, running out of pop fast. For Ensemble Studios, building a game like Age of Mythology is a constant process of testing, revising, and perfecting. Quality assurance is real important to Ensemble Studios and the games that we do. Um, we not only have our, our quality assurance group of testers, uh, functional testers and play testers and things like that, but also everyone in the company is required to sign up for a specific day and play test the game then to test out the different features that we do. It's important to us that we put out the most perfect product that we can on the shelf and that it's as polished as it can possibly be before it goes out to everyone. That's why we do that. That's why we have the dedication for the whole company to help test out the game all the time. On Age of Mythology, we have a team in-house right here. Um, and we talk to the designers every day and we give feedback and changes go in two to three times a day. Um, we get a lot more done and a lot more, a lot more changes go in and the game's going to be a lot more balanced in the end, I think. And as if this rigorous amount of testing weren't enough, Ensemble Studios brought in a force of 200 of the best gamers for a comprehensive beta test, as well as an online beta test that featured over 10,000 users. The last month of the project is really critical from a QA standpoint. This is the time where we really go over everything with a fine-toothed comb and a problem, no matter if it's unit pathing not working or if it's just a small art defect, can really stop the process. We have to go through an entire committee to actually analyze every little thing that comes up in the game and if something's a bug in the build that we're testing, we have to start the whole process over again, which can take anywhere from two weeks to a month. So we're really picky at this point in the project. You did get the green light. We're go. This is big. For the team, the last several months of the game's development life were perhaps the most stressful of all. It began with a meeting with executives from Microsoft to determine whether the product would be bug-free and ready in time for its scheduled release date. Towards the end of the development cycle, things start to get pretty hairy. We're working really late hours, we're trying to fix a lot of bugs, a lot of emergencies just pop up unexpectedly. But by the time we finally ship the game, people are extremely happy. It's such a release. Finally, with production and testing on all aspects of the project complete and all elements approved, the game headed for the stores. It was not until this point that the team at Ensemble Studios could at last pause to reflect and celebrate. After we get Age of Mythology out the door, first and foremost on our mind is having a really big party. And then we're going to take a lot of time off. And after that, we're going to come back and immediately start working on our expansion pack because our fans are going to be asking for more. And there's a lot of cool stuff in our expansion pack, but I can't tell you what that is, so you'll just have to wait and see.